Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Schrout. Today we're going to talk about a smartphone that came out at the end of last year, actually, the Samsung Galaxy Note 4. I actually have one of these here uh, sent to us at our friend, from our friends over at B&H Photo for review. Um, and what's interesting about this particular phone, obviously this is kind of the progenitor of the large phone uh, kind of phablet sensation that's going on now, right? It's a 5.7 inch screen, 2560 by 1440 resolution. So you get a very high uh, pixel density with this. What's interesting about this particular model, this is actually the unlocked international model that has a Samsung Exynos 5433 SOC. That's a quad core Cortex A57 and quad core a53 running in kind of a big little configuration. The uh, North American version is the one you can buy at AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, etc. actually uses a Snapdragon 805, so a totally different SOC configuration. Um, but this is the one you can buy unlocked. That's the downside is that you're going to have to pay a lot of money for it. The upside is you can take it to any GSM compatible character, uh, carrier, which in the US is T-Mobile and AT&T, uh, but you're going to have to pay significant amount for the phone. Actually, it's about $699 or $700 bucks, uh, depending on where you look these days. Uh, other specifications that are kind of important this, the display is obviously the most defining characteristic of the phone. It is a super AMOLED screen, uh, which is a Samsung design. Uh, so you're going to get very, very good color reproduction on this. It's going to be kind of beyond RGB specification. Uh, it is 10-point touchscreen, if that matters. I don't know who's using 10 points on a, on a smartphone this size. Um, you also get three gigs of system memory, which is a lot for a smartphone. It's available only in, the, in a 32 gigabyte capacity, but it does have a micro SD card in the back that we'll talk about in a second. So this is a very large phone. This is essentially the same size as the iPhone 6 Plus, um, but it actually has, I think the iPhone 6 Plus has a 5.5 inch screen. This is 5.7. So it's a little bit uh, uh, shorter body with a larger screen inside. So that's actually a plus, but it is noticeably thicker than the iPhone 6 or iPhone 6 Plus when you put them side by side. Um, build quality of the device is actually pretty nice. A lot of people hate on Samsung because they are using mostly plastic components, right? So you've got the back of this is kind of like a, actually I can show you here, it's kind of like a like a faux leather look and style to it. Um, but it adds a little bit of grip to the phone, which can be nice, uh, you know, if you have held an iPhone or an iPhone 6 Plus and thought about any of those issues. You can see here you've got um, your, it's a 16 megapixel rear facing camera that has optical image stabilization. They can actually do 4K video at up to 30 frames per second, 1080p video at up to 60 frames per second. You've got your LED flash, everything back there. Uh, along the sides, you have uh, a fairly nice bezel. It's kind of like a diamond cut or chamfered. I don't, I don't really know what those terms mean, but it looks nice along the sides. You've got your screen uh, sleep button here. At the top, you've got uh, one of the kind of uh, light sensors and microphone as well as your headphone output. On this side, you have your volume rocker. And then along the bottom, you've got your additional, you've got two more microphones and you've got your USB connection as well. Probably the most important, and I would say, differentiating thing about the Note as opposed to any other kind of large cell phone is the S Pen itself. So it's maybe a little bit hard to see on there. There we go. Adjust the lighting on there. So you actually get an active stylus with the phone that comes out and it stores really nicely and conveniently in there. Uh, you can't tell on video, but I can say that there's really nice kind of haptic feedback when you remove the pen and when you put it back in, just get a little bit of vibration to know that the device has come out. And when you do that, you actually get some interesting kind of user interface uh, uh, adjustments here. Right? You can do things like action memos or smart select. You can do clipping screen writing so you can take screenshots and take notes on it or you can uh, uh, you know, take essentially what our notes save them throughout your system. It's actually turned out to be pretty handy in uh, a lot of my use case. I would say that the, the, the overall experience, I know a lot of people don't particularly like TouchWiz. Uh, it gets a maybe justified bad rap on the cell phone scene because it is so varying uh, from the native Android experience. You know, there are some complaints here. If you look at the icons, for example, I think there's way too much spacing between the email and the camera and the Play Store icon. I think those could be shrunk a little bit, maybe get more than four rows across. Uh, you can see that it comes with some, these are kind of out of the box things like Galaxy Essentials and Galaxy Gifts, things that chances are you don't really need. Uh, that They're trying to basically kind of bring you into the entire Samsung ecosystem, if you will. 
using the device is very fast. Benchmarks uh, on the CPU side are actually pretty impressive. On the GPU side, not as much. This, uh, the Exynos 5433, we talked about the processor configuration. It actually uses a Mali T760 GPU, which is, it's adequate, but one of the problems is that this is a 2560 by 1440 resolution screen, very high resolution screen. So the GPU is more important in that case uh, than it might at first seem. The Ameri North American versions use the Snapdragon 805 that has the Adreno uh, 420 GPU in there that is doing much better in our benchmarks just based on uh, the Moto uh, Motorola Droid Turbo and the Nexus 6 results that we have in there as well. Now, performance aside, there's a lot of capability to the device. We've talked about the camera. It actually takes very, very good photographs. If you go look at the full review, we have some side-by-side -side comparisons that look at the iPhone 6 versus the Note 4 versus the Droid Turbo. Uh, and you can kind of see the difference in uh, image quality you get out of that. For example, the Droid Turbo uses a 21 megapixel sensor, but it takes the worst photos of the three phones I just mentioned. This takes, thinks this is a 16, and I think the iPhone is like, uh, it's only eight. I believe, megapixel rear camera, but it's all about pixel quality as opposed to pixel quantity. I'd say the Note 4 is probably the closest smartphone I have used that kind of gets you in the same area as the iPhone uh, uh, sensors and cameras and, and software have done. Uh, so that's actually a noteworthy feature there. And again, you get to record 4K video if you want to do that slow motion video as well as possible. Battery life on the phone is great. One of the benefits, of course, is when you have a large surface like this, you have the capability to have a pretty big battery. And actually, because, as is, well, as has been a staple of the uh, Galaxy series for a while, you have an easily, easily removable back on this. So you can see we have a, what's it, a 3200 milliamp hour battery rated at, what are we at here, 12.4 watt hours. You've got access for a micro SD card here. You've got your SIM card there. And of course, this battery is removable, which, you know, I don't know how many users actually are worried about having a removable battery that they can then swap, but you can buy Samsung, you know, OEM batteries on Amazon, often for as little as $15 and you can get an external charger with a battery for like 30 bucks. So if you're really concerned about battery life, you use it a lot, you're going out of town for you know, a work trip, you're gonna be gone from 6 a.m. to 1 a.m. and you wanna make sure you never lose phone connectivity, that's, that's a great capability or a great functionality, I guess, of, uh, of the Galaxy Note 4, something that obviously the Note 6 that was recently announced does not have. Um, we already talked about performance. The screen is fantastic. Again, look at the full review over at PCPer.com, and we have we give you some RGB diagrams in terms of what the color reproduction is. We have lots of benchmarks over there as well, screenshots of the photography uh, that we took with this, so you can get a comparison there. I do believe that this is um, it's probably among the best Android phones I've used. I will say that going into it, I wasn't sure that I really was going to want to have a phone of this size you know, in my pocket all the time, but it actually turned out to be pretty helpful. And when you do some things like, when you have this much screen real estate, you can do some interesting things. First of all, if we show you here on the, on the screen, they have a gesture for if you, it's, I mean, it, I have fairly normal size hands, maybe big size hands, and you can't reach more than kind of like halfway across the screen to get to it. So they have a function for that. It's just a gesture that they call an arrow. I don't know why it's called an arrow. It basically shrinks down the interface to a smaller, more accessible thing. And you can, you know, they actually kind of move the software buttons up here so you get your uh, volume increasing, you know, back home menu buttons there and you can go back there. Of course, you can also um, do, uh, let's see, a split screen mode as well that lets you run, oops, lets you run multiple applications at the same time. So if you want to run uh, Android, or I'm sorry, if you want to run a YouTube video while you are looking at a web page or reading your email or something like that, you have that capability to do it. And because you are uh, doing it on a, you know, a large screen device, it's actually pretty functional. Uh, and not many other phones have the capability to do that. I think really only the other Note devices have integrated as part of the TouchWiz interface. So it's actually one of the, one of the high points there. Um, again, downside, unlocked phone, only gonna work on AT&T and T-Mobile here. So if you're a Verizon customer or Sprint customer, you're kind of out of luck there. Also, spending $700 on a smartphone is tough to swallow considering in this market, we're used to paying $100, $200, $300 
for high-end flagship phones, even though that is kind of amortized over a two-year contract, to be sure. Uh, very good to phone. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to keep using it, actually, and, and I, think, I think a lot of people would be surprised how much they're going to like this phone. Oh yeah, and of course, we have sitting on the desk here, Maybe, I wouldn't say this is a reason to buy a Galaxy Note 4, but if you have a Galaxy Note 4 anyway, this is kind of an interesting little accessory. This is the Samsung uh, Gear VR powered by Oculus. This is something that John Carmack and Samsung and Oculus announced a little while ago. And when you have a Note 4 and you buy this, this is $199, they're actually selling it at Best Buy. You just simply plug it in, snap it into place. You hear that little chime and you have there you go. It's actually a pretty reasonable VR experience for $199, I guess, again, on top of your phone, of course. 2560 by, six, uh, 2560 by 14 resolution screen is better than what you get in kind of the, the, the development kits that Oculus is shipping out today. Application software support is small but growing. Uh, one caveat, if you buy the international version of this phone, you are going to have to download kind of a modified APK as uh, Samsung and Oculus don't actively support the international versions of this. They only kind of support uh, the ones that use the Snapdragon processor. Haven't seen anything official on why that's the case, but if you look at our graphics benchmarks, you'll see how much faster the Adreno 420 is than the Mali T760, so that might be an indication for that. So, you know, if you, uh, you maybe you commute on a bus and you want to make sure you don't ever have to look or talk to anybody again while you're doing so, you could do this. You could play some games or they actually have a movie viewer in here so you could just put a movie on an SD card and watch it on your uh, Gear VR if you want. It's just a, a neat little thing that will only ever work with this one particular phone. So keep that in mind as well. I think they're going to sell another one of these for the Galaxy S6 in the near future too. So make sure you go to PCPro.com, check out the full review. Uh, like I said, we've got all of our benchmarks, image quality comparisons, photographs. You know, if you want to see more about the phone itself, we really appreciate any feedback you have there. And of course, thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you next time.